To run a successful bus company... Uh, 180, please. ..you need to follow three golden rules. Are you comfy? Rule number one, make sure your buses arrive on time. We're never going to get back in time. Not a chance. Road closures, diversions, it's fantastic. Everything's absolutely wonderful, as always. Rule number two, keep your buses on the road. What is this? She's been a little bit temperamental, but she will start. And rule number three, hire drivers with a real passion for the job. Oops, get in. Notice the registration number, EYH. Stands for East Yorkshire Hybrid. Very smooth to drive. You've got to be some kind of sadist to do this job anyway. If the many buses come now, we're going to get stuck. Yeah. It's not going to be a good day. <laughs> All to keep your customers happy. He's gone the wrong way down the wrong way. Meet the men and women of East Yorkshire Motor Services. Where's my bus? <laughs> as they do their best to keep Yorkshire moving. Oh, my good Lord almighty. And there goes the peace and quiet. I just want to go home now. I've had enough. Yeah! Oh, bless him! <laughs> right, I'm ready to go. By the doors. Tonight, Bollocks. the engineers are feeling the pressure. The oil is running out of it. It is absolutely running out. Some rookie drivers are put through their paces. The end result, that would have been a fail. And there's a mysterious accident in the depot. That's how a bus industry is. Within ten minutes, it can all go wrong. East Yorkshire Motor Services is Britain's largest family-run bus company and has been serving their community since 1926. Good morning. Good morning, ladies. Their biggest depot is on the Anleby Road in the city of Hull. It's a non-stop job, absolutely non-stop, 24 hours a day. Here, an army of engineers, drivers and controllers work round the clock to keep their buses on the move. 649, send your message. It's September, and with extra buses needed for school runs, it's the first time East Yorkshire's entire fleet has been on the road since mid-July. Have fun at school, folks. But some of the older buses have struggled with the demands on service. Completely flat. Putting pressure on everyone from the fitters to the controllers. Is it fit enough for service? To solve the problem... Oh, here's one coming through the door. Boss Peter Ship has shelled out over half a million pounds on five sparkly new buses. Well, my wallet's feeling a bit lighter than it did yesterday, but I'm sure we can cope with that. 46 miles north of Hull, the seaside town of Scarborough is home to East Yorkshire Motor Service's second largest operation. Thank you. Thank you. Word of Hull's brand new buses has reached the controller's office. Um, I think there's only one coming to Scarborough. Which is, again, par for the course. That's what we've got. Clocks are out, Frank. It's, it's a known fact that we get vehicles that cascade. The claws are out this morning. They come cascading to us. That sounds about right. Yeah. People don't need to go to Beamish Museum. All they need to do is just come to Scourin District. It's 8 a.m. and manager Chris Agar is starting his shift at the depot in Barry's Lane. Well, we currently have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven vehicles off the road and unavailable to us today. It's one of those things, unfortunately. The mechanically propelled vehicles, they do occasionally break down. Two miles down the road in the controller's office, 67-year-old John Barlow is coordinating the buses and drivers. Yeah, Sean, sure, just bring it in front of office. It's going straight back out, man. Scarborough has 65 buses, but with a sixth of the fleet out of action for routine maintenance or repair... It's impossible. ..today could be one of the most challenging yet. I've just pulled in at the railway station. I've got to pull the oil under my back end over. 
Yeah, how bad is it? It's bad. Bad, bad. It's raining down the gutter over. I'll have to get the fitters down then, Steve. How can I get them to bring some spill over so we'll this up over? Okay. An oil spill on a city centre road is a hazard that needs urgent attention. This is ridiculous at this time of the morning. Can I ring you back in two minutes? OK, cheers. Good morning, Scarborough District. Chris, sorry to bother you, mate. Is there any chance you can go down at Engineers? It's just ringing in gears. I've got 724 with a pool of... Royal at back of him at the station. On the 120? Yeah, yeah can they... Take some sand as well. It's pretty bad by the sound of it. Oh, great. All right, thanks, John. Cheers. 724 Bridlington bus operating a 120 outside the railway station and it appears to be losing some oil. Um, so there's actually some on the road surface, so we need to get some oil silk out there to get it cleaned up. Right. I'll OK. Go, I'll Cheers, Rich. Right. In emergency, Scarborough rely on a squad of mobile engineers. Bollocks. Drivers have a nickname for us, which is FART. Fast Action Response Team. Mobile engineering to base. And Peter Goodworthy is one of their top mechanics. When things go wrong, you know, Pete can be like a blue-ass fly from one vehicle to another. He's been fixing Scarborough's broken buses for 11 years. Another bus back on the road. Another one for the fat team. Where is he? With 11 vehicles already off the road, the engineers have been rushed off their feet. Railway station. And cleaning up an oil leak is the last thing they need. Leave that one with you. Yeah. Right, cheers, Peter. Thank you. In my experience in that, that's, uh, that's a lot of oil. Seafront supervisor Paul Fryatt is waiting with the stricken boss number 724. Well, it, uh, the, uh, the cavalry shouldn't be long. They're, unless they're on another shift, they, they would normally be up at Barry's Lane. Um, unless they're already on a breakdown, we don't know that, but... I'll just stay with the vehicle till it arrives. Unaware of how serious the oil leak is, the engineers are still on their tea break. This is for your plate, a temperamental... eight. No, I don't know. Go on, a friend. Paul may be waiting a while, and with another bus down, the Scarborough controllers are under pressure. Scarborough Base, any engineer at Barry's Lane receiving this? In Scarborough, East Yorkshire's controller, John Barlow, is having a tough start to the day. Already 11 buses down, another one has suffered a breakdown. I've got a pool of oil under my back end door. Yeah, how bad is it? It's bad. Seafront supervisor Paul Fryatt is with the stranded double decker, waiting for help to arrive. Hey John, it's Paul. You haven't arrived yet. You haven't arrived yet. There's a lot of oil all on the road here, but they're going to need some sand and whatever. But Scarborough's fast action response team are running late. Just have to pull over here and see where this oil slick is. Engineer Pete is surprised by what he finds. We understood that it just dropped a bit of oil and it carried on on its service. We weren't no, told no. it dumped no, it all and... I phoned and told them that make sure that the engineers come around with some sand. We thought that's I've where you've gone down the beach so... to get some. No, I've got some oil, so no, we had our break, didn't we? Yeah. So we, we didn't think it was this urgent. Yeah. There's a lot of oil. But where it's come from, I'm not really sure. Hello, Richard, it's Pete. Hello, this little oil leak that we've got at the station is a massive oil leak and the bus is still here and it's pouring oil out from underneath. When it's running, it, the, the oil is running out of it. It is absolutely running out. It's midday and things are getting sticky in the control room. But help is on hand for John Barlow. Relief controller John Kay is clocking on. 
Scab race to 250, mobile engineer. This afternoon, John Kay will need enough buses to cover Scarborough's all-important school runs. You've got to do the schools. You can't leave the Two, school four, kids. Five, send. You can't just say, well, I'm not yeah, going to take that school. You've got to do it. Well, that's the first I've ever heard of that vehicle. Reached out everything and see how we go from there on and then report that back to me. <laughs> Engineer Pete has lost his battle with the leaking bus. It's got all its oil out. With no chance of fixing it by the side of the road, it's towed back to base. 250, base. Yeah, 250, send. Yeah, he's told me to run it in, John, because the battery's not charging, have it? We've now got a vehicle down. Apparently, it's, the batteries are not charging, so I'm going to have to quickly change it over. Engineering, I'm going to have to get the toes out on this one. Now, with 12 buses off the road, one on go slow and one that won't even start, the day is getting worse by the minute. Right, I think it's about time I went to them. <laughs> At East Yorkshire's headquarters in Hull, it's a different picture. One of the new buses! Here, they've just taken delivery of five brand new buses to meet the demands of the new school term. Hey, we have liftoff. Foreman John Taylor's in charge of getting the new vehicles ready. Don't want to be the first one to scratch one, do we? Don't want to be the first one. For two of them, first stop will be a new coat of paint. A bit more. Can't be much better than that. No, back a bit now. Back a bit, please. Back. Never please on these. A bit more. Whoa. No, no. Cheers. That's, that's it. OK. Yeah. Right, I'll pull the next one. Like everything at East Yorkshire, painting's done the traditional way. Saves trees at the end of the day. <laughs> They'll be rolled out in the customary burgundy and cream. But there's one shade of red that has no place on this shop floor. Can't have that on there, though, sorry. We have no Man United things on this side, on my side of the bus, because I'm a Liverpool supporter. <laughs> <laughs> With no time to paint them all, three of the new buses will be hitting the road all white. Ex-bank manager and bus driver Rod Hebden will be the first to drive one. We have a good day, don't scratch it. So we have a look at it. Look, it's white, it's gonna get painted. <laughs> Cheers, Trevor. See you, lads, still have it. When we get new buses, when, if you're one of the first drivers to drive them, I'm not saying we don't ever take care, but you take extra care, because you don't want to be the person to put the first mark on it. <laughs> and we're, uh, we're ready to rumble. Don't scratch it, they said. Here we go. For Rod, there's no greater honour than to run in a new bus. He's one of East Yorkshire's biggest bus spotters. This is the main part of the garage. It's changed a lot since I used to sneak in 50 years ago to look at the buses. Rod is um, a bit like a big kid when it comes to buses. Whenever we get a new bus, he'll be straight upstairs asking me where it is so we can photograph it. First day in service, photograph for the collection. Right. Sad, really, isn't it? <laughs> a week ago, Hull's control room was in disarray because of a shortage of buses. Now, with the new buses in service, the pressure is off and it's deathly quiet. I cannot remember the last time it was like this. I always wish it was busier. One, it makes this job a lot more interesting. I like this, the stress of when it all goes wrong. It gives your brain a bit of a, a workout. When everything's working, not as much fun. With no problems to manage, controllers Simon and Mally are looking through the list of who will drive the new buses first. Dave Wilkie. No, he'll be all right. 
and betting on who will be the first to dink one. Rod Hebden. No, he'll be all right. With the controllers having every confidence in Rod's spotless driving record, he hits the open road. Goes along very well. A lively little engine at the back pushing us along. The new all-white bus is puzzling a few of the regulars. I confuse you with it being yeah, white. Did, yeah. Well, it's look, it's brand new. You've got to take your shoes. You've got to take your shoes off. <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you. Driver told me to take my shoes off. I said, "Well, I'll take them off my own." <laughs> <laughs> nice little bus to drive. Yes. Can you pay to drive it? Uh, this one, yeah, it only came out eight o'clock this morning. Oh, yeah. Oh. Please, yeah it's I promise they will get painted up, so next time you won't get confused. All right. All right. Okay, do. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Made and journey complete, there's time for one more snap for Rod's scrapbook. Quick photo. But perhaps the ride wasn't as smooth as he thought. I haven't done that, have I? <laughs> the first of East Yorkshire's five new buses is on the road. As is chairman Peter Ship. As the boss and public face of the company, he regularly has to face the local media and his customers. I'm off to do the hot seat in Radio Humberside's uh, morning programme. Appreciate you coming in. OK, have a, have, a, have a seat. Plenty to go out this morning. I do hope you're going to join in and we're going to get on the buses. This is David Burns on BBC Radio Humberside. Peter, morning to you. Nice to see you as always. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, how are you doing? I'm doing fine, thank you. After a tough week of bus shortages in Hull, Peter's about to face the music. I got a tweet uh, from uh, Danielle Martinez to say, Bernty, my 71366 from Hessel has not turned up. Gonna be late, thanks. Normally we're, we're pretty reliable. In fact, we're one of the more reliable companies in the country. But we have had a bit of a purple patch for the last few weeks. But um, hopefully we're back on track now. So apologies if your bus has been missing for the last um, few weeks. But within the next two, I'm sure, unless we get another problem coming up, we've got that sorted. So apologies. East Yorkshire may have new buses to keep their customers happy, but they now face a shortage of a different kind. Have you always got enough drivers? Are you, or are you, are you always looking for drivers? What's it like out there? Normally, we're fine. The problem has been that any driver can give us a week's notice and disappear. But to train a driver to the system, that can take eight to ten weeks. So if you get, as we have unfortunately had this year, a slightly unusually high leaving rate, right. uh, it's taken a while for us to get those people replaced. With a shortage of drivers, the company are on a recruitment drive. Do you think you'll forget any routes when you're out on your own? Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, well, I've got a terrible memory, yeah. A new raft of wannabe bus drivers has signed on to their training programme. We'll get down to round, but I want you to turn left. Right. No, left. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> their latest applicant is 50-year-old Richard Treville Cook. Richard was made redundant from a high-paying communications job and has been unemployed for two years. The difference between being a consultant in broadband to being a bus driver is immense. But it's not as immense as being able to provide for your children and not. And the last two years as a single parent on benefits has been tough. I feel like I'm a part-time dad. But hopefully that's going to change. Last week, he received a letter from East Yorkshire Motor Services. This is the best sentence in a long while. I have pleasure in confirming my offer of the position of driver. Slam dunk result. Finally. This, this is gold dust to me. Gold dust. But becoming a bus driver might not be as simple as Richard hoped. First, he must pass his test. The end result, that would have been a fail.
At East Yorkshire Motor Services headquarters in Hull, they've been suffering from a bus driver shortage. Normally, we're fine. The problem has been that any driver can give us a week's notice and disappear. The company has been on a recruitment drive. Their newest trainee is 50-year-old Richard Trevelcook. Having been unemployed for two years, becoming a bus driver could be his ticket back to work. If you get the cones off and carry two cones to the far end and leave the rest at the box at this end. Steve Brown is one of the company's crack team of trainers. Due to a bit of a shortage of drivers, there is a little bit of pressure on the training school to get drivers through as quickly as we can. But whatever the pressures, Left a bit. the high standards have to be met. Uh, a bit wider. <laughs> and today, Steve's teaching Richard how to reverse a 30-foot-long bus. I'm told by a handful of people who have done the tests that this is about the worst part. It can be the worst part. OK, the purpose of the exercise is to reverse through the reverse course, which you will be doing on your test, yeah? You may not go outside the boundary of the course. Steve runs through the ground rules. Do not hit any of the poles, because that's a straight red card. Do not cross that line, a straight red card. Do not go through that line, a straight red card. Do not go beyond there, a red card. It's getting less and less fun, this. This is the fun <laughs> bit for me. <laughs> And we get... In the art of bus driving, Steve is a Zen master. Now it's all about little bits on, little bits off. To pass his test, Richard must prove he can reverse a vehicle the size of a small house through the winding course, crucially stopping inside the yellow box. Look at that. That's perfect. That's what it should be. I'll give you that one. <laughs> Happy with that? Yeah. yeah. OK, I can see this being a bit of a pain. It can be an ex extremely daunting um, exercise. Many have got it wrong, even the day before the test. The master, Steve, makes it look easy. Now it's rookie Richard's turn. Squeezing past East Yorkshire's luxury coach fleet. Remember to check both mirrors. Richard's metal is already being tested. As a professional driver, it won't be poles and cones he'll be negotiating, but parked cars and pedestrians. Happy with that? I am at the moment. OK, let's go and have a look then. See how well we've done. <laughs> I hope. First Sam. All I will say there is, do you know a good builder? Because yes. you've just knocked the wall. It's just, just, just over. Down. That is all it takes. Yeah. So if, if that had been a pedestrian, or if that had been somebody else's car, or another bus, it would have actually damaged him. The end result, that would have been a fail. Richard's chance to leave unemployment behind him and joining the ranks of East Yorkshire's drivers hangs in the balance. Back in Scarborough, it's still buses, not drivers, that they're desperately in need of. Nightmare on Elm Street. Here, 12 vehicles are already off the road. Well, we're fighting a bit of a losing battle, unfortunately. It's like pushing water uphill. We mend one vehicle and another one breaks down. Controller John Kay is trying to keep the services going. Sorry, but at the moment, I'm going to have to carry on with that vehicle because I just do not have any vehicles in the yard. I'm losing vehicles left, right and centre here. With news of more breakdowns coming in, he could be about to lose two more. John needs buses back on the road and has dispatched engineer Pete. What's it doing? It's not starting. I turned it off here because I had a few minutes layover and it hasn't started since. <laughs> it 
Sounds like a fuel problem. It's turning over and trying. It's, it's turning over and... Um, what, what else can I do? Yeah, right, I'm stuck. <laughs> I've had enough today. <laughs> right, all right then. This doesn't look like a quick fix. It stopped because it had flat, did have flat batteries. They're down a bit, but it's not charging. So it's the alternator that's not charging. There's another bus we'll have to get in. One more bus that John can't count on. Jump on that, Ted, that. And another crawling at 15 miles an hour. That's three buses down. Go on, Paul. Today. With 90 minutes till the school runs, he'll need a miracle to get Scarborough's children home in time for tea. The main point is going to be around about half past two this afternoon. If we don't get them vehicles, basically, you know, we are going to be really struggling. The schools have to run. We've got to get the children home. Engineering are going to have to come out with some. Otherwise, I've got no option but to start pulling service. John's feeling the pressure and calls depot manager Chris Agar. Hopefully, Richard's going to come up with these vehicles. If not, we are going to be in dire straits. With the clock ticking, there's only one person to turn to. I could nick you for a couple of minutes. Two words. I know. OK, like then. <laughs> OK, then. Right, we'll go and have a look at this other bus. Right, restart it. There's no power. Don't, don't, don't start nothing. Turbo pipes come off. Like an automotive paramedic, Pete quickly brings it back to life. That's the first bus back on the road. Pete's on a roll. You are dealing with a, a poorly bus and you have to repair it. When Pete's on, you know the job's going to get done. You know, and it's going to get done pretty quickly. 296. Done. Good lad. Can you get on with 250? And we go ASAP. Thanks to Pete, John's nearly pulled off the impossible. Okay, 296 is sat in the yard waiting for you. John just needs one more bus. We need to get this one out within the next half an hour. Sorted. Pete fits a new alternator to the bus that wouldn't start just in the nick of time. With enough buses, John has saved the day. But he still has his own run to drive. Right, I'm going to have to go, Chris, to get this. All right, John, let's go. Right. I'll get back as quick as I can, mate, and relieve you. He leaves depot manager Chris Agar manning control. See you later. We have 250 now sat spare in the yard, just been fitted the new alternator. Everything's running, um, and I do, at the moment, have a spare bus. So everything in the garden's rosy. Time for a cup of tea. With John back from his run, all the services are now back on schedule. But it's been too close for comfort. This has to be one of the worst weeks I've actually done in here uh, for actual busyness. You know, breakdowns and drivers. You know, if we carry on like this, you know, someone's going to go bang, literally. John may have made it through the day, but one thing is clear. Scarborough could do with a new bus or two. At East Yorkshire's depot in Hull, there's been a mysterious incident. Foreman John Taylor is investigating the fallout. We don't know exactly how it's happened yet, but one bus has got away ran into another one, and that one's... Because the pack's close on an on a early morning, it's damaged three buses. Destination glass, two front screens. It's got pushed in near the headlight there at the front. It's gone inwards. This one's got back damage, near side corner. Frame will have gone in there. Worst of all, one of those involved is a new bus. And then there was this one. 
windows gone, and lower panels. That's it, that's how it bus industry she is. Within 10 minutes, it can all go wrong. East Yorkshire did have three brand new vehicles on the road, but with these three damaged buses out of action, the fleet back to square one. Head of the company's CCTV, Tony Hodgson, checks the footage from the bus's cameras. There's nobody in it. He's trying to stop it, look. So the ground? It's yeah. Good. Nobody in it. I've left it with handbrake off. Union bosses Stan and Tony investigate with depot manager Ken Sim, and a picture is beginning to emerge. It's obviously been in gear with the handbrake off, hasn't it? Of course it has. Which means it's been started up and then put in gear. If a bus is started and left in gear with the handbrake off, the air brakes will fill automatically. Once the air brakes are full, the bus will drive forwards regardless of whether there's a driver behind the wheel. The vehicle has been started by a person. There's nobody in the cab. The, ve the person has got off the bus to deal with something else. Every morning, driver Graham Franklin gets the depot's 107 buses ready for the day ahead. But this morning, it's all gone wrong. Before he left for his school run, he informed his supervisor of the accident, and now he's back to deal with the consequences. I'd obviously put it in gear, took the handbrake off, and then got distracted. And for the life of me, I don't know why I haven't put the handbrake back on. I, st I still don't even know that now. Uh, when, I've gone, when, when I've gone to help somebody else and come back, I hear this scraping noise, and I thought, I wonder what it was, and when I looked, I thought, I just saw the bus moving. I actually thought there was a driver on the bus. Then when I looked and there was nobody sat there, I thought, and then obviously they don't know what happened. A desperate Graham threw himself in front of the bus, only reconsidering in the final seconds as it crashed into two others. Panic sets in, you try and stop it, don't you? There's nothing you can do, you can't run in front of a bus. So just got, got to the doors, got in there and just Stopped it, put the handbrake on, but by that time it already, it already done a bit of damage, so... Safety breaches have to be taken very seriously. And even with 16 years' experience with the company, Graham is up on a disciplinary. Leaving a, a bus unattended with the engine running and the handbrake off is very serious. Uh, potentially, uh, it could have caused an injury to himself. It could have quite feasibly run uh, an employee over. And if you make a mistake, then you've still got to be pay, pay the penalties for, for even mistakes. I was just in a bit of a, in a rush, and I, I, I just had to, um, in, well, I'll live by my mistakes anyhow, I know that, if I get another chance. <laughs> Graham has been with the company for 16 years. Now, he could be facing suspension or even instant dismissal. Given the fact that a bus could have potentially a member of staff, could have killed you, because the way you tried to stop it was, I, I was just bewildered but by what I was seeing. This morning, East Yorkshire's depot in Hull was the scene of a mysterious accident involving three buses. It's left the company short of vehicles for service, but Foreman John might have a solution. How are we doing with the other bus, Les? We're finished, yeah. All right, I'll take it out now. Can I take it out now? This is one of the, one of the new ones which we've painted. Thankfully, one of the new buses has a fresh coat of paint. We have life and is ready for the road. See how long we can keep this in one piece, eh? Huh? Earlier, driver Graham Franklin admitted to the accident that damaged the three buses. After 16 years' loyal service, he's now been summoned to a disciplinary with depot manager Ken Sims. 
obviously that's negligent on your part. Yeah, yeah. There's no two ways about it. You can't describe it of any. No, no, no. Somebody as, as professional as yourself and doing it as, as long as you have now, uh, you should know that you can't, you should not leave a vehicle in that condition. Given the fact that a bus could have potentially a member of staff, could have killed you, because the way you tried to stop it was, I, I was just bewildered but, by what I was seeing. Mm. However, I have to take into account the fact that you was on your own. It is a big task that you've been asked to do uh, each morning, uh, and that needs to be taken into consideration, definitely. There's no two ways about that. The idea was to take you off this altogether, yeah. however. I'm not prepared to do that, I'm not going to do that. If you want to carry on doing it, no, definitely, yeah. then I'm, I'm quite happy for you to continue to do it. Graham's back on the buses. But it's an accident no one will want repeated. You learn by your mistakes. I won't, I won't rush about now. I'll just I'll do the job to the best, I'm, even when I'm on my own. And uh, I'm just thankful that they kept me on there, because they could have quite easily took me off. I could see in his eyes that he was extremely, uh, how shall I say, disappointed in himself for the mistake that took place. So, you know, genuine remorse was obviously evident from, from him and I obviously took that into account as well. With Graham's future at East Yorkshire secure, one man is hoping to join him in the ranks. Richard Trevelcook has been unemployed for two years. He has a shot at becoming a professional bus driver. Today is the day of his test. I need to focus. I really need to focus. Passing will be his ticket back into full-time work. Just passing this test isn't just for me. It's, um... It's for my son as well and my daughter. I'm just... It's like, you know, is it my turn for things to go right? Trainer Mike Watson has been mentoring Richard for two weeks. You'll deal with it, whatever you come across. So That's what I'm feeling, yeah. It. I know, you've got every confidence in you. Don't, don't panic. Don't panic, Mr. Manor. <laughs> don't panic. Right. To relax. Just a bit tired. Feeling a bit tired across the eyes, that's all as well, but. Well, that's right, yeah. Yeah. I'll be okay. Before he leaves for his test, Richard practices the all important reversing manoeuvre one last time. He's come up short. Like last minute nerves. Okay. That's it, looks like we're off. Yeah. It's the moment of truth. Time for Richard's test. He's in the hands of his examiner now. All that Mike can do is wait. Kind of told him not to be too devastated if he doesn't do it. Yeah, because he can do it. It's just probably circumstances that on the day that you just don't pass your test. He might take it quite hard. I'm hoping he doesn't, but he might do. Test over. Richard's time on benefits could be at an end. But has he done enough to join the ranks of East Yorkshire's busmen? Ta-da! It's the blue form I was hoping for. 99%, 99 out of 100. So, yes. <laughs> there you go, this is it. Now, this means a great deal more than it looks. This is just a little tick in the box, not much of a tick to some people perhaps, but it's a massive, massive tick for me. This is for the family. This helps me to be a dad like I want to be a dad. In Richard, East Yorkshire have a new driver. And with extra buses out on the road in Hull, things are really locking up. On a wet and windy day in Scarborough, they're still struggling. 
But hope is on the horizon. We have got a new vehicle en route to Scarborough at the moment, which is fleet number 373. Controller Andy Jude is tracking its progress. He wants it in service as soon as possible. It's just outside Sledmere, which is just near Driffield. Andy's not the only one eagerly waiting. Seafront supervisor Paul Fryatt will have the honour of being first in Scarborough to drive the new bus. Everybody likes to have a drive of a new vehicle now and again. For the busman of Scarborough, this is a real red letter day. Hey! I say they're nice to drive, so uh, I'll soon find that out in a few minutes. To deliver the new bus, Tony Hodgson is driving the 46 miles from Hull, but he's going the long way round. I tend to use back roads a lot, that way you don't get stuck in any traffic. While Tony navigates Yorkshire's country lanes and mucky tractors, up at the controller's office, they're wondering what's taking so long. Not far away, is it? Can't find it. Can't find it. Can't find it. It's gone back to all. It ain't broke down, is it? She <laughs> blows. Oh, filthy. It's filthy. <laughs> Had a wet ride. You would think so, wouldn't you? Yeah, it's come the quickest way across the fields. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the crow flies. <laughs> but they got some spuds. <laughs> Scarborough finally have a brand new bus, although not such a sparkly one. There's the new bus on, up to the wash. Yeah, I'm a bit disappointed. I was looking forward to it. just take it on to Cerny round into the town centre to change it over, but uh, yeah, it's not going to happen now. It's got to be washed. So, uh, yeah. so I'm not going to be the first one now. <laughs> Bottom lip. <laughs> but with another four brand new buses on their way to Scarborough, Paul will get another chance. 